there were a lot of electric lakes up and down the East Coast, and they're great fisheries, but they're electric only, so uh, some reservoirs or lakes will let you drop in a gas-powered boat and use your trolling motor only, but what we fish is all electric only. No gas motors at all, so, um, you know, some people are blown away when they see the boats and what we have invested in it, but when it's our only waters that we can fish, um, that we love fishing, the, it's well worth the investment. Morning folks, today I'm on Lock Raven Reservoir with oh, yeah. Matt Elliott and Kevin Hosh. Morning. And uh, we're gonna spend the day out there talking about tournament fishing here on these uh, the Baltimore Reservoirs. Let's hop on and see if we get a couple bites first. Sounds like a plan. So you guys had a great 2021 season. Can you tell me about it. What do you say, Kevin? What do you what would you think about it? Uh, it's pretty epic. You know, this is the first year we fished tournaments together. Lucky enough to win all six of the Metro Reservoir Anglers. Uh, we won Angler of the Year, and we also won the Electric Bass National Championship this year. So we fished Metro Reservoir Anglers, and. Um, yeah, it's the first time I've I've won the Angler of the Year, so that was that was really an achievement for me. And we just honestly we set out to have fun this year and win one tournament and get a limit. And um, we managed to win six tournaments with six we got six limits and came in second place in the tournament of champions here at Lock Raven. And um, that was just exciting to be able to fish that one and uh, came up run, runner up and. Um, it's always a learning experience, every tournament. Oh. I just needed to pull back a hair, huh? Nice chunk. Down the hatch. Decent little fish. Uh, this is a half ounce Z Man jackhammer with a Z Man razor shad. Uh, this is a custom rod I build myself. It's a 7 3, medium heavy, 15 pound fluorocarbon. And a seven to three one reel. So Kevin, tell us about your your rig here. What kind of top end speed are you seeing? You know, tell us about your electronics. Just give us a walk through your boat here. Sure. So this is an 1860 Weldcraft custom made aluminum 80 gauge. Uh, we got the Torquedo 10.0 on the back here. A six inch hydraulic Bob's machine shop jack plate. Uh, we move up front here to the battery to compartment to behind my center console I'm running four 26104 Torquedo lithium batteries. I have two 50 amp hour lithium batteries for my Ultrex 80 up front with the spot lock technology and 100 amp hour for all my electronics and my accessories. I will move up here to the console and we got two Hummingbird Helix 10s um, up front. At the bow, we have one Solix 12, one Helix 12, and I added a new Garmin 93 SV this winter to try out the uh, Garmin Pan Optics. Um, we got the front deck with the tackle storage underneath, and then a custom hatch in the back here as well. It depends what prop I run, but if I run the three blade prop by myself, I can get up to 16 and a half miles an hour. If I run the five blade prop, we see 11 to 12 miles an hour, but we can go faster, longer without the cutback. So this is uh, the front bow set up here. We got the Garmin 93 SV. This is strictly for forward facing sonar, so we can look out in front of the boat and pan around. 
and find individual fish on the screen and try to catch those suspended fish. Um, I also use the Solix 12 up here. This mainly finds the structure that we're fishing and we can see that out in front before we get to it. Uh, but it also shows the fish. The only thing it doesn't show is where in the water column those fish are. So you can pair these two technologies to find the structure and then find where the fish are in the water column. This Helix 10 right here, usually use it for traditional sonar or down imaging. We do use side imaging a little bit here and then we also use the use this for mapping. Um, I have all the hummingbird units connected via ethernet so they share all the waypoints from the front of the boat to the back of the boat. There we go. Right in the lip. Nice bass. Sometimes I like to look in the belly. Sometimes you'll see tentacles sticking out, but we don't see any today. Got a sore lip. I was just on a little half ounce, little half ounce green pumpkin jig with Berkeley chigger crawl right up in that tree. Never felt some hit, but I saw the line taken off. Is that one you made? Yeah, this morning. <laughs> really? <laughs> you kidding? No. About four o'clock. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your, your tackle crafting. I know the uh, <clears throat> that you make your own jigs and and uh, yeah, that's what you you always say. What the the night before is last nighters. Last nighters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have a million and one baits at home, but for whatever reason, I like to make up fresh jigs for our tournaments. And um, whether it's just superstition or not, it's done us real well. And then Kevin always goes home with a bunch of fresh jigs. <laughs> so tell me about the, the jig that you got most of your, your fish in last summer's tournaments. Are they... I guess you're using heavier weights than what you're throwing shallow today in yeah, the they're spring. Yeah, anywhere from three quarter to one ounce, um, or half ounce to one ounce. Half ounce, I'll use more uh, medium action rod with braid for half ounce jig in deeper water. But um, three quarter, one ounce football jigs are usually my bread and butter. A big presentation. You know, we're usually trying to target three or four pound tournament fish. And um, yeah, three quarter, one ounce football jig is, is what I like. Either black or green pumpkin. How do you tie them up? Just thread and a bobbin and a vise. Um, pour, pour the jig heads in the do it molds. Paint them with the Protec powder paint. And um, cook them in the oven, then drill out the holes for the weed guard, tie, tie the lure up, and then we glue the weed guard in. Favorite skirt material you tying with? Um, silicone is the easiest. Um, some fine rubber. Rubber's great, the problem is it doesn't have a great lifespan. After it gets beat up in the sunshine for a while, it usually melts, but the beauty of making your own is that you have an unlimited supply. So we're taking a look at the Torquedo throttle right now. This is all connected via the data cable, so it gives us real-time information. So up top there, I had the battery percentage left. Then I had the miles at the speed I'm currently going and the watts that it's drawing. This is crucial to tournament days so we can time our runs and our range we have so we can utilize the battery as much as possible if we're making a long run we know how much battery we have to get up the lake and then back down the lake to make it to weigh in on time so we're not getting disqualified for being late. So Matt, how long have you been fishing the reservoirs? Any any changes you've seen in the, the three reservoirs? Uh, in the fisheries over 
in the period of time you've been fishing them? Yeah, so probably since early 2000, I've been fishing the reservoirs. And um, one thing I noticed, uh, Liberty and Pretty Boy have definitely gotten a lot more grass in them. And um, I think there's a shad population starting in, in uh, Liberty that never once was. And for bass fishing, grass is... Grass can be your best friend, and uh, take Liberty and Pretty Boy, for instance, that are a lot hard, a lot rockier than Lock Raven. It's nice to be able to mix in the grass into the habitat for the fish in those reservoirs. And um, the deep coontail in this reservoir, I think, is real special. It allows the fish to be able to it's shallow to deep in the summertime and always is a place for the whole bait fish and forage so that's what i think has changed in the reservoirs from what i've seen for the mouth. I'll never shake that. No crawls. Thank you. How do you guys pre-fish? Do you, do you pre-fish on the same boat? Do you split up and fish on your own boats to double the effort or what's, what's your and, and how do you, you know, how do you pre-fish and not just sore lip fish that you need to bite on tournament day? Last year we did a little bit of both. Um, I usually pre-fish Saturday and Sunday before the tournaments since I work Monday through Friday. Uh, so I'll fish both of those days before the tournament. And Matt will come with me some of those days. If not, I'll tell him what I found on the weekends and then he'll, he can go out during the week and check on stuff if it's something we think is promising or if we didn't find anything on the weekends and then need him to go out during the week as well. But uh, spend a lot of time behind the electronics and practice, uh, just looking, looking for bait, looking for fish. Uh, if I get a bite in an area that's productive, I'll usually leave that area. Um, sometimes you get more than one bite in that area, just go ahead and shake those fish off. There's no sense in sore lipping them before the tournament, but it's kind of how we do it. How do you guys decide who's, who's up front? Um, I guess it depends what, what baits we're throwing and depends of the fam familiar familiarity of with the area we're fishing. You know, it, we jump back and forth. chunk I'll take it back to the wood never felt that bite water temp water temps 56 so Originally, the deck ended right here, and the foot pedal was just resting on the floor. So we put a recessed foot pedal in, which makes all the difference in the world when you're standing on it all day. 
Then we added this deck. There's some, there's padded carpet under here. It's a half inch yoga mat with carpet over top so it makes it comfortable to stand on all day while we're fishing. And then as we go back towards the back of the boat, there's a custom built battery compartment and then the standard bench seat in the middle and then we added an extra hatch onto the back and we also did the custom drilling for the hydraulic jack plate to mount the 10.0 on. performance out of that motor so I uh, got my jig snagged here on a little rock pile Matt makes these custom homemade lure knockers just a heavy weight with a clip on there and you clip it on your line and slide it down and nine times out of ten your lure comes back and saves you some money There it is. You got it? Got it. <laughs> and you got your lure bag. Right. So Matt, besides having the, uh, the perfect season with Kevin <laughs> last year, you've achieved some other records on uh, as far as the the tournament series here on the Baltimore Reservoirs Can you tell me about your uh, your biggest bag sure that was I think 2015 um, or 16 that was uh, Victorini and I uh, 35 14 on Liberty Reservoir and that was a real special day. It just came together. Um, we weren't racing anybody anywhere. We just kind of went out and did our thing and um, worked our way up lake, fishing some main lake points. And we got one or, one or two points in the afternoon and um, just smashed them. And uh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> it was a great day. And, and that's the, the biggest bag that's been caught in the in this these series or yes for eight fish yep. 35 14 so it's what like four and a half pound average yep. for eight fish yeah we had all we had a one over five and the rest were nice fours and uh we were fortunate i think to sweep lunker large mouth small mouth and and the victory that day so that was awesome So on this 360, you can see a bait ball right here. That one, two, three bass with it. Son! fish so on tournament day you guys you don't have a live well that I can see in this this layout here what do you guys do what do you guys do to keep keep your fish uh, healthy and so we use a cooler it's about 30 gallons of water and we set it right there in front of the, the center console and actually I have electric that comes out here that I hook a recirculator up to and then I also will run a pure oxygen system under the console with the tank there and feed the tubing out to a stone in the live well itself. Uh, the morning before each tournament I put 14 pounds of ice in there that way when we put the water in the live well it's cool to start and then another key component is adding G juice to that live well once the uh, water and ice have mixed together and that first fish goes in the well. Uh, other than that we use non-penetrating cold clips and then if we have to we use a fizzer or uh, fin clips to make sure the fish survive all day and they're good to go at the end of the end of the tournament. 
guys. Appreciate you taking me out here in Lock Raven today. You guys had an amazing 2020. I wish you guys luck in 2021. You got a <laughs> you got a mountain to climb to do that again. But good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're just doing a little bit of follow-up here with Kevin on his boat on Liberty. Yep. And uh, you got the three-blade prop on there. Yes. And you've gotten better speeds with that. Correct. So let's, uh, let's blast it, see what we get. Sounds good. So Kevin's going to get the, the solo top speed here, and then, uh, and then we'll do it with, with both of us in the boat, just to give you a better idea of, you know, two-person tournament, what kind of speed and range you can get. All right, 16 and a half solo, one person in there. Uh, I'm gonna have you hop up front okay. and I'm gonna go ahead and, and operate the throttle and we'll get our speeds, um, you know, each each two mile an hour with two people in it. And we'll, we'll display that. Sounds good. Cool. trying to stay in an area where there's not wind. The wind is picking up, but so at 10 mile an hour, we're using 9,412 watts. I'll record that and get all that data. All right, I got my data set and uh, I'm gonna sit here with my, uh, my pen and paper and, and my calculator on my phone and figure that out. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna hit a couple rock piles, some deep rock piles, some shallow rock piles, and hopefully find a big aggressive smallmouth that's looking to move up and feed, get ready for the spawn. Cool. You do that, once I'm done, we'll uh, we'll look at the data and comparing the, the two different, uh, the five blade with the three blade prop on the cruise 10.0. Sounds good. All right. Coming out into some deeper water. And just were you just ticking along the rock? Yeah, I was just feathering over those rocks. Big thing, make contact with those rocks, and then just let that let that crankbait kind of rise up. And as soon as it popped up over that rock, fish ate it. Nice. Just fishing a windblown rocky bank for some pre-spawn largemouth here. About this nice uh, three and a half, maybe three and three quarter largemouth. All right, I finished doing the, the math here. We're gonna look at the clipboard here and go over the uh, the results of the three blade versus the five blade and what that means in terms of speed and range. I do wanna go over the uh, the math involved. And, and this is different for every boat. You know, this isn't that, hey, if you buy a cruise 10.0, you're gonna get the same results as, as Kevin's boat because Kevin's boat is Kevin's boat with Kevin's load and Kevin's how he has everything laid out here. Uh, every boat is different. Um, but if we look here, I'm gonna do the math real quick. So it's a Weldcraft 1860. We got a cruise, Tor Torquedo Cruise 10.0. We have four Power 26 104 lithium batteries. They have this amount of watt hours each, 2685 and you multiply that times four that is that's our gas tank that's our capacity of, of energy in our gas tank right so an example is to get to 10 mile an hour with a three blade you we we checked and got it to 10 mile an hour and that was the the watt draw so 9412 watts to get this boat to 10 mile an hour okay so our 
our energy gas tank of 10740 divided by that watt draw equals 1.141 hours of runtime. So that period of time times 10 miles per hour is 11.4 miles of range. So that's that's one example of how we've calculated all of this data. Now I'm going to stop looking at this data and we're going to come back to this thing. This and the whole system with with the power, uh, the Torquedo power batteries calculates it automatically for you based on your, you know, your battery, remaining battery percentage, watt draw, the, the wind that's coming at you, whatever it is, it's, it's an automatic calculation. So you always know, you know, real, real time runtime, what you have left. But this is an overall of if you have, you know, full batteries and, you know, perfect conditions, what you can expect out of it. So Kevin got to 16 and a half mile per hour with the three blade prop with just him in it during the boost phase. Can you explain what the boost phase does for you? And, and maybe I should preface it by saying boost phase only lasts, you know, less than a minute. What does that do for you on tournament day? So tournament day, we blast dolphin waves of five boats and there's 30 seconds in between each wave. So if we're a lower boat wave, we can use that boost in the morning to jump out and get that full speed and then catch up and then pass boats that have blasted off either 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half, or two minutes before us. So we utilize that in the morning on our first run and we're able to get out in front of the competition and then to our spots faster before they can as well. Okay, so in this example, you know, we, with two of us in there, with the three blade prop, uh, we got up to, you know, um, we got to that speed with the three blade prop and the four, the five blade prop didn't get up to that speed. The five blade prop only got to, um, to 10 mile an hour. So both of them got to 10 mile an hour and the three blade prop had greater range than the five blade prop. Same thing as you go all the way down this. So in the example of so, so the three blade prop is just the more efficient prop and you get you get greater boost speeds out of it. Right. I'm thinking that's maybe the one you should be running on sure. this, this particular boat. Um, let's do some math. What's the furthest you run here on Liberty? Usually about 14 miles round trip if we're gonna go up lake and fish. Okay. So with the with using you know with using the boost at the beginning and then you have a cruising speed of eight mile an hour you can do that and, and maybe you maybe you come back off of eight mile an hour a little bit to preserve some some scooting around in in different areas and hitting different spots on the way out or the way right. back sure but eight mile an hour you know to cover a, a lake a reservoir like this, Liberty is, is over 3,000 acres. Not every reservoir is like that. So smaller reservoirs where you're not making as far of a run, you know, certainly you can you can jump up to that 10 mile an hour cruising speed and, and not really worry about it. So hopefully that helps folks kind of visualize what, what a cruise 10.0, which is a 20 horsepower equivalent electric outboard can do for them on tournament day or just even exploring and, and checking out some of their electric only water so i appreciate you having me on the uh the boat to test this out and um it's, it's been fun uh fun filming this man no problem thanks for coming along